Hey guys, this is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR Pharma Tube. Today we discuss about gastric proton pump inhibitors, which is the last topic in antihistaminic agents. In the previous video, we learnt H2 antagonists, which were found to be effective in the treatment of ulcers. Although the H2 antagonists have been remarkably successful in the treatment of ulcers, they have been largely superseded by the proton pump inhibitors. After this lesson, you will be able to understand what are the gastric proton pump inhibitors, where the gastric acid is secreted in the human body, the effects of gastric acid secretion, how this gastric acid secretion can be controlled or inhibited, the chemistry and classification of proton pump inhibitors, therapeutic uses, and lastly, the adverse effects of proton pump inhibitors. Coming to the introduction to proton pump inhibitors. Although the H2 antagonists have been remarkably successful in the treatment of ulcers, they have been largely superseded by the proton pump inhibitors which are abbreviated as PPIs. These PPIs are sometimes referred to as gastric acid secretion inhibitors or gastric acid pump inhibitors. They work by irreversibly inhibiting an enzyme complex called the proton pump and have been found to be superior to the H2 antagonists. The PPIs bind to the hydrogen potassium ATPase enzyme system that is proton pump and suppress the secretion of hydrogen ions into the gastric lumen. The membrane bound proton pump is the final step in the secretion of gastric acid. Thus, PPIs inhibit gastric acid secretion 90% greater than the H2 blockers because they block the final step of acid production. They are used on their own to treat ulcers that are caused by NSAIDs that are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and in combination with antibacterial agents to treat ulcers caused by the bacterium Helicobacter pylori. Now, let's see parietal cells and the proton pump. When the parietal cells are actively secreting hydrochloric acid into the stomach, they form invaginations called canaliculi. Each canaliculus can be weaved as a sheltered channel or inlet that flows into the overall ocean of the stomach lumen. Being a channel, it is not part of the cell but it penetrates and increases the amount of surface area across which the cell can release its hydrochloric acid. Consequently, potassium ion undergo a cyclic movement in and out of the cell. The protons required for the hydrochloric acid are generated from water and carbon dioxide which is catalyzed by an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. Once the protons have been generated, they have to be exported out of the cell rather than stored. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, a buildup of acid within the cell would prove harmful to the cell. Secondly, the enzyme catalyzed reaction which generates the protons is reversible and so a buildup of protons within the cell would encourage the reverse reaction and slow down the production. The export of protons from the parietal cell is achieved by an enzyme complex called the proton pump or hydrogen potassium ATPase. The proton pump is only present in the canalicular membranes of the parietal cells and is crucial to the mechanism by which hydrochloric acid is released into the stomach. It is called an hydrogen potassium ATPase because it pumps protons out of the cell into the canaliculus at the same time as it pumps potassium ions back in. Energy is required for this process as both the protons and the potassium ions are being moved against their concentration gradients. In fact, the ratio of protons inside the cell to protons in the canaliculus is 1 to 10 to the power 6. The energy required to carry out this exchange is obtained by the hydrolysis of ATP that is adenosine triphosphate, hence the term ATPase. The pump is not responsible for the efflux of chloride ions. These depart the cell through separate chloride ion channels. 
This outflow closely matches the efflux of protons such that a chloride ion is released for every proton that is pumped out. As a result, hydrochloric acid is formed in the canaliculus rather than inside the parietal cell. As each chloride ion departs the cell, it is accompanied by a potassium ion which flows through its own ion channel. No energy is required for this outflow because the potassium ion is flowing down a concentration gradient. The potassium ion acts as a counter ion for the chloride ion and once it is in the canaliculus, it is pumped back into the cell by the proton pump as described in the parietal cell structure. Chemistry of proton pump inhibitors Proton pump inhibitors are lipophilic weak bases that diffuse into the parietal cell canaliculi where they become protonated and concentrated more than thousand fold. There they undergo conversion to compounds that irreversibly inactivate the parietal cell hydrogen potassium ATPase, the transporter that is primarily responsible for producing stomach acid. The currently available proton pump inhibitors are benzimidazole derivatives containing a chiral sulfoxide moiety as part of their structure. All PPIs contain a 2-2-pyridyl methyl sulfenyl benzimidazole core. These agents are marketed as racemates with the exception of omeprazole that is available as the S enantiomer that is S omeprazole and the racemate. The PPIs are prodrugs and as a result of their weakly basic properties concentrate in the secretory canaliculi of the hydrochloric acid secreting parietal cells. In acidic environments, these compounds undergo transformation to yield an achiral sulfenamide derivative which reacts with thiol groups of hydrogen potassium ATPase to yield a mixed disulfide resulting in inactivation of the enzyme and a reduction in acid secretion. You can see the reaction in which the PPI which is a chiral drug that undergoes acid catalyzed transformation to yield an achiral sulfenamide wherein the benzimidazole moiety is bound to the pyridine's nitrogen atom thus no chiral sulfur atom is seen. It itself isomerizes to form a heterocyclic ring system between the benzimidazole and pyridine moieties and then reacts with thiol groups on hydrogen potassium ATPase to yield a mixed disulfide resulting in inactivation of the enzyme and a reduction in acid secretion. Classification of PPIs Till date, the PPIs available in the US to treat various gastric acid hypersecretory disorders are number 1 omeprazole, number 2 esomeprazole which is an active enantiomer of omeprazole, number 3 lansoprazole, number 4 pantoprazole and number 5 rabeprazole. The PPIs differ only in the nature and degree and pyridine and imidazole ring substituents which has an impact on PKA values and pharmacokinetic properties. The extent of initial PPI protonation and thereby parietal cell accumulation is governed by the PKA of the pyridine ring nitrogen that ranges from 3.8 for lansoprazole and pantoprazole to 4.5 for rabeprazole. See the table given. Thus, all drugs are believed to be concentrated at their physiologic site of action to a similar extent. The rate of conversion of PPIs to their active sulfenamides, however, is determined largely by the PKA of the benzimidazole group that is PKA2. Omeprazole, lansoprazole and rabeprazole with higher PKA2s that is 0.622-0.79 from the picture undergo benzimidazole protonation and sulfenamide formation faster than pantoprazole with a PKA2 of 0.11. Coming to the individual drugs, the first drug of this class is omeprazole. Omeprazole was the first PPI to reach the market and was marketed as Losec in 1988. It is a Y2 off-white crystalline powder with very slight solubility in water. It is an amphoteric compound. Pyridine nitrogen has a pKa of 4.06 
and benzimidazole nitrogen possess pKa of 0.79 and consistent with the proposed mechanism of action of the substituted benzimidazoles. It is an acid labile compound, therefore it is formulated as delayed release capsules containing enteric coated granules. The second drug is S-omeprazole. It is the S enantiomer of omeprazole. The benzimidazole PPIs contain a chiral sulfur atom that form an enantiomeric pair that is stable and insoluble under standard conditions. The S isomer of omeprazole has a slightly greater PPI activity and its intrinsic clearance is approximately three times lower than that of R omeprazole. The third drug is lansoprazole. It is a white to brownish white odorless crystalline powder that is practically insoluble in water. It is a weak base that is pyridine's nitrogen has a pKa of 3.83 and a weak acid wherein benzimidazole nitrogen possess a pKa of 0.62. Like other PPIs, lansoprazole is essentially a prodrug that in the acidic biophase of the parietal cell forms an active metabolite that irreversibly interacts with the target ATPase of the pump. The fourth one is pantoprazole. It is a white to off-white crystalline powder that is freely soluble in water, very slightly soluble in phosphate buffer at pH 7.4 and practically insoluble in N-hexane. The benzimidazole of this drug has a weakly basic nitrogen. Pyridine's nitrogen has a pKa of 3.83 and an benzimidazole proton has a pKa of 0.11 facilitating formulation as a sodium salt. The stability of the compound in aqueous solution is pH dependent. The rate of degradation increases with decreasing pH. The last drug is rabeprazole. It is a white to slightly yellowish white solid. It is very soluble in water and methanol, freely soluble in ethanol, chloroform and ethyl acetate and insoluble in ether and hexane. It is a weak base. Pyridine nitrogen has pKa of 4.53 and a weak acid wherein benzimidazole's nitrogen possess a pKa of 0.62 facilitating sodium salt formation. Coming to the mechanism of inhibition or mechanism of action. The active metabolites of PPIs form a covalent disulfide link with a cysteinyl residue in the proton pump found in the luminal membrane of the gastric parietal cells. The drugs irreversibly inhibit the proton pump and prevent the secretion of gastric acid for an extended period. The drugs can produce a dose-dependent inhibition of up to 95% of gastric acid secretion and a single dose can inhibit acid secretion for 1 to 2 days. Hence, the PPIs are more efficacious than the H2 blockers for most conditions. Omeprazole is a weak base and so specifically concentrates in the acidic secretory canaliculi of the parietal cell where it is activated by a proton catalyzed process to generate a sulfenamide. The sulfenamide interacts covalently with the sulfhydryl groups of cysteine residues in the extracellular domain of the proton pump thereby inhibiting its activity. The specific concentration of proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole in the secretory canaliculi of the parietal cell is reflected in their favorable side effect profile. Therapeutic applications of proton pump inhibitors PPIs like H2 antagonists act at parietal cells and decrease gastric acid secretion. They are used therapeutically in a variety of situations like short-term treatment of active gastric ulcers, active duodenal ulcers, erosive esophagitis, symptomatic gastroesophageal reflux disease that is GERD that does not respond to other therapies, active peptic ulcers associated with helicobacter pylori infection in combination with certain antibiotics and long-term treatment of hypersecretory conditions such as Zollinger-Ellison syndrome in which a gastrin-producing tumor causes hypersecretion of hydrochloric acid. 
PPIs also reduce the risk of bleeding from ulcers caused by aspirin and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and may be used for prevention or treatment of NSAID induced ulcers. Adverse Effects of PPIs The PPIs are generally well tolerated. Therefore, adverse effects are minimal with both short and long term use. Some common adverse effects seen with PPIs therapy include headache, diarrhea and abdominal pain. Other less common effects include nausea, flatulence, constipation and dry mouth. This is the list of references for this lecture. That's all in this lesson, gastric proton pump inhibitors. With this, we end a full topic of antihistaminic agents. We will discuss on antineoplastic agents in the next video. Keep learning and keep watching my videos. If you did not subscribe the channel yet, please consider to subscribe the channel now so that I bring several useful lecture videos. Thank you for watching this video.